Hello there everybody and welcome to this channel. My name is Tewoho but you can call me Savvy. And for this video we're going to be working on the largest bird that we have on this planet and it is the ostrich. So get your reference images, get your drawing pad and your pen and let's get started. So to start things off like we usually do we're going to start off with simple shapes blocking out the legs, the body, the head, the neck and all the other little features. One of the great things about blocking out your character's body parts or blocking out whatever you're sculpting is you can keep most of the body parts separate. So say for example, you wanna focus on the leg, you can hide all the other sub tools and just focus on just the leg or you can focus on the body or the neck or whatever. But for the ostrich, I merged everything together because it's, uh, it's a really simple creature to work on. There aren't many things to, to, to focus on, so I don't have to separate everything. Also, another part about separating um, your body parts is sometimes there are body parts that are overlapping other body parts. Say, for example, you want to sculpt the, the, the leg or the arm and it's so close to the to, to the main body that you can't really go in and get those fine details underneath there but uh, for this one you didn't really need that i didn't really need to do that so i just merged everything and then carried on sculpting what i like to do when sculpting you'll notice that uh, i tend to use the clay builder brush a lot um, in previous videos or future videos to come, I use the clay builder brush a lot. It's a really great brush. Uh, what I do is I set the value to high sometimes, or I even change the alpha. I change around the alpha sometimes in the, in the brush stroke. But what I tend to do when sculpting cra characters, creatures, and whatsoever, I tend to, to get the major information down. I sculpt, or like I basically just do a rough sketch over the sculpt with a clay builder brush, like really major, messy sculpts everywhere. So you're just roughing things out first and then you come in later and you smooth things out. Sometimes I do smooth things out uh, during the, the rough process, but I tend to uh, smooth things out later at a later stage. Another great thing that you can do with the uh, divide modifier, uh, what you can do is you can rough things out at a lower level at a lower subdivision level and then if you go up in in division the zbrush will kind of try to smooth things out for you so it's a really good way to to mess around with your uh, subdivision levels one thing to remember when working on animals or animal anatomy or creatures say for example you want to work on your own kind of creature your own fantasy creature you made out of imagination you have to remember that um you kind of have to know why the creature's body parts are shaped that way or the animal's body parts are shaped that way so say you're working on a lion or like right here this ostrich you have to understand why the ostrich's legs are pretty long compared to most creatures or most animals and it's because they are creatures that are normally running so they are normally running at high speed so they have to have really long legs or why is it that um, dinosaurs for example some dinosaurs developed uh, feathers they evolved to, to, to later on grow feathers and you find out perhaps that it's because they moved to environments they migrated to environments that had a lower temperature and uh, the feathers are probably there for thermal regulation so um, understanding why a creature looks that way or understanding why the animal looks that way really helps to really sell the animal or really sell the creature so even if you're working on your fantasy creatures your sci-fi creatures your aliens or or anything even bringing it back to earth and working on animals like ostriches elephants and whatever you have to understand why these body parts look that way it just really helps sell the animal and really helps you helps you sculpt it much easier so when it comes to the feet, I chose to keep them as a separate sub tool. I tend to do this with other things as well, such as the head, the eyes, and other parts of the, the ostrich. But for the feet, I chose to keep it as a separate sub tool and make it like a wrap of skin. And then the rest is just anatomy.
For the rough patterns on the legs or the feet of the ostrich, you can either this, oh, by the way, this also goes for any other rough skin that you might work on, like elephant or anything else like that. Uh, you can either use the clay builder brush or the clay brush, uh, or you can also, I believe you can also use the surface modifier and add in noise, and then you can go in and sculpt the your own imperfections there or, or you could actually make your own alpha with its own rough patterns and then you could just uh, draw on to the sculpt or sculpt over the the rough patch that you want to be there and using the drag stroke or you could just sculpt it yourself uh, i chose to sculpt it myself over here and uh, every now and then you'll see me going back onto the leg and adding in more rough details uh, until the very end where it's actually really rough and I put in my own patches and everything and my own little micro details manually. By the way, when you're working on things, features like nails, claws, horns and teeth and so on, it's best to keep those features as separate sub tools. It's uh, really easy to work on everything when it's separate. You can also mask all the things that you don't want to work on, the, all the features or all the body parts that you don't want to sculpt, mask them and then create different layers so you can go back and then mask everything else again a lot easier. But it's way easier to keep them as separate sub tools. Also, this is important to remember when you want to do things like retopologizing for uh, a final render in the future or you want to throw it in you want to throw your mesh into a game or an animation or whatever so it's best to keep it as separate sub tools because that way you can now retopologize things separately and then just merge them into one major mesh and then you could just if you want to merge things together say a different sub tool and, and another sub tool and you want to merge the mesh together you can use the bridge feature rather than uh, using dynamesh in zbrush dynamesh is a really handy tool but the problem is sometimes dynamesh it really messes up your um, uh your sculpt's topology so the topology will be everywhere it does a really great job but the problem is it's trying to make sense of the high detailed mesh that you already have so it's best to uh retopologize things separately or do it the old-fashioned way throw it into a different software like maya or blender and retopologize them manually but if you want to do it here in zbrush it's best to keep things as separate sub tools so that's just something important you should know if you want to do that in the future as you can see here i sort of restarted some of the main features i smoothed out the entire body and then I came back and I sculpted a little more. This was because the first one, I didn't feel like there was enough detail or I didn't focus enough on certain features, such as the dip around the sartorius muscle here and the uh, latissimus dorsi at the back. Although I did leave it a little more smooth out than before, I felt like before it was just too rough. Um, there, there was another way I could have done this repair or fixed it i could have just uh, smoothed it a little bit in a lower subdivision and then uh, continued working on from there but i felt like it was a need to restart a little bit also it's not a big problem to restart sometimes don't feel like uh, it's the end of the world if you're going to restart a certain sculpt or a specific feature within the sculpt it's all it's sometimes good to restart when it comes to certain things that you're doing because it it, it gives you the chance to do it again with more information this time now it is obvious that there are major differences between your normal bipedal animals and your quadrupedal animals uh, such as humans and lions because humans are bipedal and lions are quadrupedal um, you could still find most of the and most of the muscles within a human in a lion or in an ostrich as well so um, we do have similar muscles it's just everything is just placed differently and it's sized differently say for example an avian like a normal bird that flies so you would find that their pectoral 
is uh, quite big. It's, it's Their pectoral muscles are big enough or like they're wide compared to the rest of their body where you would find in a human, your pectoral muscles are average sized uh, compared to the rest of your body. Now, when it comes to the differences between your common ostrich and your normal avian or any other kind of bird is that uh, birds are mainly made for flight and ostriches just cannot fly. So their pectorals would obviously be different and all the other uh, parts of their bodies would be different. So one thing that you've probably already noticed by now is that the ostrich that I've just sculpted, its legs are uh, bent a little, a little uncomfortably. I just want to get them straight, looking like uh, it's actually standing up straight rather than it's bending its legs, almost like it will, it feels like it will just fall forward. Um, and sometimes you will get to this point where you, you feel like your sculpt is completely done. You, it looks good, but sometimes when you zoom out or when you take a second look uh, after taking a break or two or like after 30 minutes, you see that, oh, okay, this is actually incorrect or there's a small little error here and there. And it's easy to manipulate all the major shapes or the entire mesh and deform it much easier at a lower resolution and you can just go in mask everything and then rotate uh, all you want that's actually the basic principles you should always try to remember try to follow uh, the rules whenever you're working on characters or whatever is your lower subdivision is for mesh deformation it's for the major deformation and your highest subdivision level is for the finer details 